Santa Clara Board Supervisor District 3. So we'd like to more uh, hear more about yourself uh, from you. So how did you, how was your journey from Taiwan to US and your career and how you got into the politics, please? Yeah, it was a, a, a long story. Uh, I came to this country as a graduate student so after I finished my bachelor's degree in engineering. So uh, I pretty much came to the country with uh, luggage, two luggage full of textbook and a few hundred dollars in my pocket. And after I finished my uh, graduate school, I got relocated by a, now a company called IBM. It's from, from Los Angeles area to San Jose in 1978. So I worked at IBM as an engineer for 18 years. But during that time, um, my, my wife and I decided to start a Chinese restaurant. So this is uh, what I called an immigrant moment. And uh, so when, when I got laid off by IBM in 1970, no, 1996, uh, we'll just, you know, put, put more uh, effort and time into the, the restaurant business. And that's when I be able to uh, interact with a lot of community members. You know, those who are community movers and shakers, you know, they like to come to the restaurant for their fundraising events or it's, it's a good gathering place. And at that time, I noticed that uh, Asian has a long history in this, uh, Santa Clara County, but there's few, few representatives. And uh, I'm watching my kids growing up here. I know that this is going to be their home. You know, this is going to be where they uh, erase their family. And so there was, a, a, you know, a fire under my belly to say, you know, we need to have more uh, voices at the table. And uh, th that's how I started uh, getting into the public service uh, area. I was first served at the Santa Clara County Behavior Health mental health board. And then later on, I serve on a work to future board, which is to help the dislocated worker and as at risk children to uh, get back to our uh, community. And in 2001, I decided to run for the local school board. And I got elected on the school board twice. And then the 2006, there's uh, an opening in the San Jose City Council. Our San Jose City Council is uh, elected by district. And my district has a very, very high immigrant uh, uh, resident. So I felt that it's also a good uh, opportunity for me to expand my services to this community and to the uh, immigrant families. And, and so I throw my hat into the ring and was very uh, honored to get the majority of the vote and was elected to be the first Chinese American that ever got uh, served on this prestige uh, position. And I uh, well, served in the San Jose City Council for eight years and before there's an opening in the state assembly. So I felt that was a, a part of a, a natural uh, uh, migration to expand my services, to represent the uh, uh, immigrant community in the state of California. So I, I was also very honored to be re-elected uh, twice so I've been serving on this uh, uh, state assembly for six years. You know, the, the term is two years, so it's kind of short. I'd like to change that, but that's a different uh, topic. And now uh, I, I wanted to come home and, and uh, to focus my 20 years of uh, service experience to address the issue that's important to Santa Clara County. 
And that's why uh, I'm going to step down from the assembly and come home and, and run for the county supervisor. So very uh, impressive and a very uh, touching I mean, journey from Taiwan to uh, US and then to the state assembly. And we wish you good luck on your next run. Uh, Thank you very much. to know a little bit more about this current situation uh, in California uh, about the COVID-19 COVID pandemic time. So it, does, it is the one state I mean, which has taken the corrective measures in the early uh, and they were able to blunt the curve uh, uh, better than more other states in the beginning. And now all of a sudden the numbers are going up. And again, we are uh, seeing, I mean, uh, closing down the county by county. I think we're close to few, maybe few, few counties has been uh, uh, given stay home orders, looks like. So can you help us out in understanding a little more about what's happening in California with the COVID-19? Yeah, uh, California uh, has about more than uh, one-tenth of the population of, of the whole United States. So it's a very populous uh, state. And uh, at the beginning of the outbreak, we were very focused on the hospital bed to make sure that we do have the protective uh, equipment for all the healthcare workers and also have enough bed uh, when it, it come to the worst case scenario. And we, we were very disappointed. I'm very disappointed with the federal government not having the stockpile not having uh, not well prepared for for this uh, pandemic, so the, we are scrambling at the state level, trying to uh, get the PPE, the personal protective equipment, for our healthcare workers and other frontline uh, uh, workers, and that was a big challenge. And we're also very concerned about not having enough hospital bed if the outbreak uh, 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 really uh, uh, get what, what was uh, projected by the uh, um, uh, healthcare official at that time. So now uh, six, well, well, not six months, three, about 300 days plus, 100 plus days uh, at the initial outbreak, we, uh, we, we got enough PPE and we have a surplus of hospital bed. And so uh, we, we, we are much better prepared for uh, the, 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 um, the second wave or to really calm down the, the, the first wave. Uh, most of the residents are very uh, cooperative. They follow the uh, shelter-in-place order and uh, now we uh, encourage them to keep a good social distance and also wear masks, you know, before we be able to come out with the vaccine for this virus. And wearing this mask, I believe, is very, very uh, important for, for, for us to stop the spread of the virus. You're not only protecting yourself, your family member, and you are also protecting the community. So we just, this, the state government, the, the governor just put out an executive order to mandate that people, if you go out to the public, wear a mask. It's a very, very uh, a simple thing to do. And I wanna encourage everybody to follow that uh, rule uh, across the globe. You know, uh, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect the, the public. Thanks for sharing the, uh, the situation in California and also sharing the you know, uh, guidelines to be safe. So yeah, I hope um, people will follow the social distancing and wear the masks and uh, minimize the social gatherings and uh, stay home uh, as much as possible. Let's hope for that. Uh, the, while we are cautioning people to stay home and, and uh, minimize going out and all those things. So if you look at the uh, 
a business side, uh, the heart of our economy is the small business. Uh, and uh, another thing is uh, I mean, the restaurants is another one. So then coincidentally, you have been in the restaurant business for, for a long time. So, so what do you say about the, the uh, fate of the small business uh, and, and especially the restaurants uh, in the in US and especially in the, uh, California yeah, during yeah. this 19 time? It is so, unfortunately, um, you know, you mentioned about the restaurant business and actually all business are suffering so bad because of the pandemic. So it is a matter of uh, health, the life of the people or the economy. You know, as an elected uh, uh, official, we are under a lot of pressure to open up the economy because we uh, not only need the, uh, the, 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 the tax revenue, but we also are concerned about the high unemployment rate. We're very concerned about people not having an income. We're, not, we're concerning about the mental health impact and the, the, the anxiety that was imposed on the uh, community because of the shelter in place, because of the close down of the business, because of the high unemployment rate. But on the other hand, uh, we are really, really relying on the health professional to give us the direction and to, uh, uh, to pretty much save life to reduce the burden of our hospital systems. And so it is a hard balance. I, I know you met the, the restaurants um, are hit really, really bad. And uh, the, the other area that um, I'm most concerned is the, the, the students. You know, they, they can go to school and uh, they're staying home and the parents with the school age students now have to play a teacher's role as well. So I have heard a lot of uh, uh, con uh, calls from the parents. They were in, in kind of the anxiety and uncertainty and not knowing that they are, are teaching their kids, you know, uh, uh, as good as their teachers can do. And they'll worry about the 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 miss the opportunity of teaching the, their their kids on what is uh, you know what what they can get from the school. So this is a real real uh, dire situation, and we just have to really uh, work on it a good balance. And we're trying to come up with more guidelines for what uh, the business have to. The, 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 the precautious measure they have to take before they open. And hopefully uh, people and the community will, will uh, respect those guidelines and uh, uh, so we can open up more businesses and, and also at the same time sp stop the spread of this virus. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a Pure, totally uh, different situation and new to the everybody, both the government and also the people. So hopefully as we go on, we understand uh, how to live with it or how to manage or how to survive and how to open up the uh, businesses and the schools. And uh, uh, let's hope uh, both the government and the private uh, entities will find a solution for this and we'll come back to uh, close to the normal at least, if not to the normal. Um, not, uh, yeah, not, a, a new normal, a new yeah. normal, not, not, not really the way that we lived uh, before. But uh, until, we have, uh, until we have the vaccine, then we have the herd immunity, which means that more than 80% of the people are immune to this virus, uh, then we'll be able to get back to the old normal hope for that as early as possible that's one thing coming back to switching to another topic i mean um, california when you talk about the california we all know now california is a beautiful state and california 
uh, especially if you look at the technology point of view it is the uh, headquarters for the technology and and uh, uh, you have uh, it made i mean people uh, like uh, steve jobs and the googles and uh, yahoo uh, uh, from zero to i mean uh, multi billion uh, dollar people so but at the same time i mean if you look at the uh, economy uh, once the economy is booming but at the same time you have people who are uh, struggling to pay their uh, house rents and uh, people i mean uh, it's hard for them to make a living in uh, california there are two sides of people i mean one are i mean decent and uh, affordable and other people are not able to afford i mean their daily uh, living in the california state so how do you see this uh, gap between haves and have nots within a, a booming economy which itself is called i mean fifth largest in the world no that's a really good observation and a very good questions and i think uh, this is very obvious uh where i am here in the uh, county of santa clara what we call a digital divide you know those people that have uh, m- make a lot of money with the uh, new technology and then there are a lot of uh, people that do uh, doing the service type of work you know you're talking about the restaurant you're talking about the 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 uh, janitor services and 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 so on and so forth the farmers as well they are still struggling because of the higher and the higher cost of uh, living in in the area like in silicon valley and that's why you see a lot of traffic congestions on, on our roadway because uh, people cannot afford to live in silicon valley have to Uh, move outside of silicon valley and commute to work on a daily basis that's a bad very very a bad situation because not only uh we take away their time uh with the family but sitting on the car 2 3 hours a day what it just create a lot of uh, uh, uh pollutions in in to in our environment so we're trying to definitely uh working at all government level to uh, be able to build more affordable housing and also streamline the the process so make the developer uh and make it easier to build uh, affordable housing and we have pushed for this uh a little we call it uh a uh, uh, uh what about uh small tiny homes that people can put in their backyard and and to uh, to rent it out to solve of the softest uh uh a housing issue and we're mm-hmm. also uh I am very uh, also uh, uh trying to encourage or actually I have a bill that going through the legislature to ask the large company to pay for a uh, employee tax based on their number of employee or people call the headcount tax for the larger companies to contribute more to the community will actually help with their employee that live in this community so we we're, we're uh, i think to solve this problem we need to partner with the private sector you know the nonprofit and all levels of government to uh, really put, put a, a dent on this issue thank you very much for your views so you brought in another point about the uh, regulating the uh, housing house construction works i mean but see if you look at the california i heard i mean you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, rules and regulations in bring uh, when you start a new construction uh, in california and also there is no uh, regulation on the rental side because if you look at any apartment uh, uh, in the especially the place where you are in the santa clara county uh, nothing is less than 2 in apartment i'm just talking about uh, less than 800 square feet in apartment i mean it will cost you at least 2000 dollars anywhere between 1500 to 2000 dollars i don't think you will get anything 1500 i maybe my numbers may be wrong it is uh, close to close to over than $2000 so how is that impossible for a guy a single income person to live 
and is there any uh, legislation to uh, ease the uh, regulations on new construction and bringing down the rental costs down right we, we do have the uh, uh, depend the state has the rent control law so we limit the increase of the rent for uh, uh, many of our rental properties mm -hmm. and we're trying to encourage more uh, residential development but however we you have to understand that the uh, uh, residential development usually will also add the burden to the local government. You know, you have more uh, uh, residents, then you might need more fire protection, police protections, and the road repairs, and, and so on and so forth. So it depends on city by city. In San Jose, where I live for the next uh, for 30 some years, we have a, an imbalance of daytime population and the nighttime population. Our daytime population is less than half of our nighttime population, which means that a lot of people that live in San Jose but work outside of San Jose. So that's the issue I think the city leader need to address to be able to attract more business to San Jose so people do not have to commute that far to work for one thing. And secondly, and, uh, uh, and we'll help out with our local uh, uh, tax revenue. You, 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 you know, with uh, California has this... Uh, Prop, uh, Proposition 13, which is to limit the growth of the property tax to 1.2% every year. And uh, uh, so the, the property tax revenue is really, is really low in the state of California. And we, that, that, that's create a, a lot of a, a, a problem for cities like San Jose. Before Proposition 13, our city's uh, uh, revenue, about uh, two-thirds are coming from, uh, two-thirds of the property tax are coming from uh, uh, property, property tax, two-thirds two of our revenue from, from property tax. Now, uh, only about one-third of our revenue from property tax. So we're, 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 uh, when, when I was on the San Jose City in 2008, where we have the, a bad recession, we're really, really uh, struggling. And to, so I have made the long term of a city policy to uh, what, what we call the uh, employment land preserving, preservation, employment land preservation policy. So if the land is zoned, industrial or commercial, we will we, we'll have a very, very difficult uh, a kind of a, a, a big wall to make a change to residential zoning. So we could be able to hopefully attract more business down to San Jose and will help us with the uh, uh, property tax as well as the business to business tax to, to continue providing a good services to the people that live in San Jose. So the tax structure also played a very important role in, 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 in this situation. So very nice. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your views on the, what's happening in that uh, area. Uh, See, if you look at another 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 issue with the California is uh, what we have seen is, I mean, no doubt it's generating more technology and with that one, I mean, more opportunities, more uh, money and more business. But at the same time, I mean, uh, many companies are moving out of California. Uh, they are mainly going to the Texas or Arizona, or Nevada, or Utah or Denver. Uh, um, and say at the same time, I mean, if you look at the central uh, parts of uh, California, they are struggling, as we discussed in the, uh, earlier. So, is there any measures? I mean, uh, uh, for the, as a house or uh, government, 
uh, not taking to retain those businesses or get, create more employment. See, when you talk about San Jose has to create more, uh, bring in more employers, I mean, one side, but the employers are moving out of California itself. So is there any- I, I think a lot of uh, companies that move out of California uh, is because of the cost of living, you know, but on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, California uh, has still has a lot of uh, advantages. You know, the climate is, is is definitely one thing, and then we have good uh, universities, we have good talent, and we have been able to continue uh, attracting uh, talent from all over the world. You know, and so th th there there definitely some advantage here. And that's why the, 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 it, it really make the cost of living so high. So we, uh, uh, we are definitely concerned about the, the, the Central Valley uh, economy that you mentioned. And uh, because it's really a, a fruit basket, not just for uh, California, but, but for the whole United States and the whole world. You know, they produce almonds, a, a, a lot of uh, a, a vegetable. They are uh, pretty much exported to uh, the other uh, countries as well. And, and so uh, with the, the, the policy that uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, close to kind of uh, 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 close down or or, or uh, uh, limited our our uh, foreign trade uh, outside of the California has a, a big big um, negative impact to those uh, farmers in the Central Valley, Fresno areas, and uh, we also as a government, uh, as a state government. We are also trying to uh, help out the, with the economy. In the Central Valley, uh, for by by bringing in the high-speed rail would be the first inch or first mile of high-speed rails in in the United States, and and focus in 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 the, the Central Valley area from uh, uh, Fresno to to Bakersfield. So uh, that will actually create a lot of construction job there as well and uh, um, help with the local economy. So, but now with the, the, the funding of the, the government because of the COVID-19, uh, the, I, I, the future of the high-speed rail is, uh, is really uh, uh, at a risk. All right, gotcha, okay. Hope I, thanks for that one, I mean, uh, Hope I mean things will revive and I can uh, California can go back to its original plans. I know I mean they have been surplus uh, last year and with the COVID nineteen I mean they have uh, they got to the deficit budget. They are under a deficit budget. Do you want to give some highlights on the recent budget? I mean uh, which uh, your house has passed. I mean do you want to say anything on the budget right now? Right, the budget is 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 pretty bad as. Uh, um as of any other state or any other uh, government, including the federal government. Uh, California is the fifth largest economy in the world, you know, but it's not a, an island. So we need to really be able to, uh, uh, not only leading the recovery, but helping other um, uh, areas, other states, and even uh, go beyond the country boundary to have a global uh, recovery, and then uh, I think will we'll be will be beneficiary to all people. You know, it, it is uh, the budget is looking pretty bad. Uh, I was very, um, uh, uh, very, I would say, uh, comforting to know that the uh, area that I was most um, concerned about and most passionate about, which is in education funding and human services funding, are pretty much intact. You know, uh, so uh, 
but other areas is all got uh, negatively impacted. And we're just looking for uh, economic recovery, not just in California, but uh, the whole United States and throughout the world and to pretty much uh, 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 lift our uh, state out of this recession. Got you. Thank you very much, I mean, uh, for mentioning about no impact on the educational budget. Uh, I see California, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, earlier, uh, is the fifth largest economy and uh, it is uh, its growing economy. Uh, but at the same time, even before COVID-19, California has seen another uh, issue, like, I mean, uh, especially San Francisco and LA, the homelessness, uh, uh, homeless people, like quite a few, um, large number of uh, homeless people were living in San Francisco and LA. I think yesterday I read a news item about the uh, governor announcing some uh, measures uh, taken to help these homeless people. So I would like you to help us understanding why this homeless situation has been created and then what are the health measures I mean, government is taking to help these people. Right, you know, uh, you know, like like you mentioned, the uh, disparity between the half and half not is very, very uh, obvious in a high cost of uh, living area. But if you look at uh, the homeless population, there runs a gamut of why people become homeless. You know, you have those uh, cases where. A uh, um, family member trying to e evade a domestic violence. You know, mm -hmm. they they just grab their kids or grab their beyond belongings and run out of the hostile situation and become homeless in instantly. And to all the other the other extreme is uh, people with multiple barriers. You know, they could be drug addict. They could have a um, mental health issue and, 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 and some other, uh, uh, other issue. So to address the, the homelessness issue, we first have to understand how people become homeless, why people become homeless. You know, we, 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 we will have to, a, a solution from a rapid rehousing for those people that all of a sudden just lost their job or just uh, 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 trying to get out of a hostile uh, situation, domestic situation, or those people, uh, and they, they might just, because uh, they, they, they lost a job and they, they just cannot afford the rent, you know, so we, we need to, to have some funding for this uh, uh, rapid rehousing and we'll be able to help them to find a, a roof over their head, provide them with the, the, the internet connection, telephones or whatever, so they can actually go out and find another job and get out of this, this terrible situation. But also we need to uh, 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 have funding for those hard to serve or those people have multiple barriers, you know, not just to find a roof over their head, but also be able to pro pro provide a continuous a service to, you know, help them with the mental health situation, uh, help them with the drug addict situation to, uh, to bring them back to our community. So it is a very, a uh, complicated issue, and uh, uh, it is a, <clears throat> a big uh, a social issue that we, we need to uh, uh, address. But it's yeah. not a one size fit all issue. You know, yeah. the, the, the limited amount of money, we need to really decide how much should be spending on the rapid rehousing, and, and, and how much money we need to spend on job training uh, and how much money we need to spend on uh, the rehab, uh, rehabilitation, uh, uh, how much money we need to spend on mental health services 
to really uh, have a long-term solution. That is, uh, yeah, is a, yeah, I think a few days back, I think yesterday, uh, or a day before yesterday, I don't know exact date, I mean, uh, governor was talking about uh, key to the uh, homeless people, I mean, I mean, converting the hotels, uh, rooms, uh, buying those hotels and then putting this, uh, I mean, homeless people in the, one of those, some of those hotels, so our motels. So can you talk a little bit more about that, if possible, please? Yeah, right, that's right. We, we have, the state have allocated, uh, I can't remember the number, but it's a huge amount of money. $900 million, something of that kind. Okay. Uh, is that two million or one million something to, uh, to buy some of the um, vacant uh, hotels? And this is something we've been doing for, for a long time. We, uh, even when I was on the San Jose City Council, we negotiated with a, a lot of uh, hotels and motels and to, to provide vouchers for those uh, homeless people to, to have a, a, a place to, to, to live. But uh, again, the uh, intention at that time was trying is, is more for what I call the rapid rehousing, and we allow them to stay there for ninety days and to pretty much uh, get their life uh, 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 back on their feet. Uh, uh, but this proposal uh, initially uh, was to help with the homeless people to provide a good social distance, to provide a, a, quarant a quarantine if they were tested positive for the, uh, the COVID-19 virus. And we're trying to uh, um, st step up a notch to uh, allow them to stay there for a longer period of time, again, uh, to uh, to help them to uh, get back to their so society, so this uh, there will there will still be a time limit of how long can you stay in 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 this uh, room hotel rooms and um, and and again it it is a transitional housing uh, trying to get more people to be able to uh, get back on their feet and, and, uh, and, and go back to uh, uh, the community and have a, a better living. It's okay. not a permanent, it's not, you know, uh, 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 it's a temporary housing, but we, we have a, enough timeline for them to uh, uh, learn the skill they need you know, find a job and get back on, on their own. Gotcha. Okay. Going back to the uh, education, I mean, again, uh, uh, California is again, I mean, doing very well in many sectors. Uh, but when it comes to the education, the school systems are in the top place from the bottom. So, I mean, so what is that? I mean, in spite of spending so much of money and, and uh, why is that California is still on the bottom? Is anything which uh, go government doing to improve the education system in California? Yeah, that's uh, uh, again, uh, go back on the uh, Proposition 13, limit the growth of their property tax. Mm -hmm. The uh, property, the state doesn't take a penny out of the property tax. The property tax is all spent on the local government and the education and the local school district. The state doesn't, the state is more rely on the income tax and, and sales tax. But income tax and sales tax, you know, uh, it, it could vary from year to year. Whereas property tax is a much more stable revenue for education. But because of Proposition 13, we, the, the increasing of the property tax cannot catch up with the inflation. And so after Proposition uh, Prop 13, uh, we, the state, uh, uh, the, the voter of the state also passed a Proposition 98. Proposition 98 is to say, uh, 
after the income, the local property tax cannot uh, uh, fill the uh, need of the, 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 the education and then the, the, sit, the state will have to move our income tax to fill, to pretty much uh, fill up the, the, the glass. So as a result, more than 55%, even during a good economic year, more than 50% of our uh, state revenue are uh, going into education. You know, we, we know if, if, if more than 50% of a family, of 50% of their income are spending on one area, you know that other areas could suffer. So the fact that we uh, are spending uh, uh, per pupil step spending in California is low. I think it's all because of Proposition 13. Now, uh, on the November ballot, we have what we call the Community and School First Initiative, which is to change the tax structure for industrial and commercial property. So we'll be able to uh, uh, re-assess uh, uh, their property value and increase their property tax uh, uh, separate than the uh, residential property. So hopefully that will bring more uh, revenue to the school, to the local government. Gotcha. So when it comes to the I mean, property taxes, uh, I know the property tax percentage was is less, but I mean, if you look at the Bay Area, especially the uh, house of uh, average house value of the house is more than a million dollars. So, uh, so that should yield a decent money, isn't it? I mean, I just, out of curiosity, I'm asking you. So how come they still the less money? No, the property, uh, property 13 says that it, it, I think it was uh, becoming a law in 1978. Okay. So unless you have a transaction, you, you, you sell the house to the new buyer, you know, mm -hmm. this county cannot come in and reassess your property value. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people have the house in 1978 are still paying the property tax level, you know, based on the 1978 property uh, value, not to today's value. And so the initiative of the uh, school and community first initiative is to change that assessment for commercial and industrial property. So the county can go in and reassess their property value and, uh, uh, and, and impose uh, a property tax based on the uh, most current market value of those industrial and commercial properties. But uh, if, if you uh, have the property back in 1978, you know, you're still in, enjoying a very, very low property tax. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you very much for clarifying it. But there is one more uh, recently, another uh, topic uh, on education has come up in California, which is uh, ACA 5 and repealing the 209 uh, in the house. I think it looks like house has passed the bill. So can you uh, uh, elaborate a little more about what is this ACA 5 or, or repealing 209, please? Yeah, the, the Proposition 209 is uh, uh, abolished. Uh, the the uh, uh, higher education or, or uh, workplace to look at the the ethnicity of the applicant to mm -hmm. do to to kind of a color blind uh, 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 proposal. You cannot uh, 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 look at the. The, the color of the people or their ethnicity to determine on the admission to the higher uh, higher education or to offer them the job or not. And so this ACA 5 is to uh, revoke that Proposition 209 and was saying that when consider the college admission and when consider uh, a job application 
you have to look at the ethnicity of your applicant and um, to, to the intention is, is to give those uh, 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 underserved colored people a better opportunity to get, get to a university and, and hopefully be able to uh, uh, find a better job. You know, um, I, I didn't vote for it because I felt that the disparity, just like we talk about, is actually it, the, it, it's, it's the income uh, level. It, it's a really a financial uh, 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 issue. And I would think all, all along pushing for better K-12 education to prepare all people for a college education. At the same time, I'm being advocating for lower the cost of college education. So I felt that uh, uh, without do accomplishing those two goals of increasing uh, a better K-12 education or pre-K-12 education and lowering the cost of college education, will not benefit uh, those people that are uh, uh, that doesn't have the means or even can have a dream of going to college. So I like to uh, uh, have a, a, a more opportunity based on the financial situation versus just the ethnicities. And I think we're raised uh, the, 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 the vote for all people. Gotcha. Thank you very much for clarifying your views and, uh, uh, yeah, and information on many uh, topics which we have discussed so far. So uh, is there any, uh, do you want to talk about any bills you have introduced in the house during your career, please, in the, uh, in the house? Wow, uh, every, every session, every year, I'm trying to uh, uh, limit the bill to maybe 10, 15, but for the last six years, uh, because of a lot of uh, uh, last minute uh, requests from a different uh, um, group of people uh, and to, to carry the bill. So I, I think on average, I have about almost 18 bills every year you know, mm. to uh, introduce to the assembly. Uh, but what I really uh, look at it, uh, you know, if, if it's a good bill or, uh, uh, or it, I, I, I have a measure of how many people or, will actually be affected by this new law before I consider carrying the bill. And uh, one of the bills that I carry was to abolish the uh, changing the clock. You know, there's an, every year we have to switch the clock uh, uh, twice. And that was actually enacted by the vote of the people back in the 40s. So after uh, 70 years, I, I did a lot of research on the, uh, whether the energy saving by switching back and forth, and is there a health impact by switching back and forth, and I decided to uh, carry the bill to move California to a, a wide time zone throughout the year because uh, there was a lot of reports to say the, the health hazard, uh, uh, of, of especially uh, and, and the mental health impact to, uh, to many of the, or to all of Californians during the, the, the weeks on when they lose one hour of sleep and so on and so forth. We see the increase of a uh, car accident and also a uh, uh, work-related accident. And so I, 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 I moved the bill and also put it on the, the, the ballot. Uh, the reason I need to put it on the ballot because the Constitution, California Constitution, says that if the law was enacted by the vote of the people, 
And if you want to change anything in that law, you have to, you know, put it back to 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 the uh, to the people, and and that's why I have uh, put this uh, Proposition Seven on the uh, 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 statewide ballot in in 2018, and got overwhelmingly approved by the voter, and I felt I was uh, uh, and and actually brought a lot of attention to many of the uh, states uh, and in the United States, including our neighboring state, Oregon, Washington, uh, all the way to British Columbia. And, mm -hmm. and the Canadians were uh, uh, interested in putting a similar law through their legislation to abolish the, um, the, the, the switching the clock twice a year because it doesn't yield any uh, energy saving at all. It was uh, 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 put into law during uh, 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 when it's actually started in in, in Europe, <clears throat> in, in in Germany, when they were preparing for the war, and they and the energy was scarce at that time, so they used this uh, extended uh, daylight to boost their pr uh, production. In one t period of time, they will actually have a two hours difference between the, 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 the daylight saving, the summertime and the wintertime. So uh, the fact that I'll be able to put that on the ballot and uh, not spending a lot of money and, and get a, a majority of uh, approval, I think was uh, is something I, I feel real good about it. But then uh, the other bills uh, uh, that I've been advocating is uh, uh, some uh, school-based mental health, you know, because their study shows that 85% of the, the students that need mental health ser services and doesn't have access to mental health services. So I've been pushing for school-based mental health services to have a, a counselor, a mental health counselor in every school to help the student out at a younger age, um, <clears throat> and that effort, actually, uh, very proud to to say that earned a recognition by the Mental Health of America uh, just last year for for um, the advocate uh, for my advocacy of uh, mental health services and education, pushing for mon more funding for education and lowering the cost of uh, higher education. Is also um, being my um, my uh, lifelong effort. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Kansan Chu, on these things. See, so you, you've been doing a, a wonderful job as a legislator, legislator, and at the same time, I heard. I mean, you're moving out of the uh, house and then running for another position, uh, which is the board position, uh, sorry, board supervisor at Santa Clara. County District Three. So, why are you moving away from the house and coming to the uh, local politics? You know, I, I'm not a politician. You know, oh. you see a lot of politician. You know, they they got elected to the uh, uh, assembly. They look into the mirror. They see the next senator. You know, when they get elected to the senator, they look into the mirror. They see the next congressman, you know. But I am a humble, I have a real humble beginning. I look into the mirror, I still see a graduate student, a new immigrant, with uh, two cases full of uh, uh, textbooks and not, not a lot of uh, uh, money in my pocket. So the reason I get into uh, this uh, 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 elective position is really, to me, is a way to serve the public. You know, I have very honored to have the opportunity to serve the people uh, the, the, uh, in California. You know, this is 400 million people. You, you understand that we are elected by district, but every law that we propose will uh, affect every 
a resident of California and many, many generations to come. So what, what something is good for Santa Clara County or the, the Silicon area, why not be good for Central Valley? Why not be good for Imperial County all the way to the Modoc County? So I wanted to focus my service to uh, my, my home or, you know, Santa Clara, where I have uh, spent the most of my adulthood there to, uh, to address the issue that are most important to our area. You know, there's a saying that charity started at home. I felt this is the time for me to focus my effort at home to make Santa Clara County a better place to work, to live, to raise a family, to play, and to retire. Very nice. So if you, in case, if you are elected to this position which you are running for, so what changes are you trying to bring in to the Santa Clara uh, County District 3 Board? Definitely, there's a lot of issues, you know, we have talked about, you know, the, the digital divide, the half and the half not, and the, the housing issue, and, uh, and the, the employment uh, issue, and how to recover from the COVID-19. You know, I like to definitely bring my experience of being on the San Jose City Council during the 2008 uh, uh, recession, you know, to address those uh, 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 issues that we're facing in Santa Clara County, transportation, housing, mental health, uh, unemployment, the digital divides, and, and, and so on and so forth. Gotcha. Thank you very much for your views. And uh, do you have any message to our audience and the listeners or your constituents? No, but thank you very much for the opportunities. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Time. Thank you for coming on to the show. And we wish all you right. all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Have you. Bye-bye. Nice.